Unpause. Okay. So we had the wrong size cable and it was bothering me. So what we want to do here, this is a quarter inch cable and this is the saddle, right? Uh, how it's always used wrong is they saddle a dead horse is what it's called. And you'll hear me if we ever use this in the same room, every time I use them, you'll hear me say, never saddle a dead horse. And I do that as a safety check on myself to make sure that I'm using these correctly. And when we work with knots, we talk about a live and a dead end. The same thing applies here, okay? This is your live end because it's holding the load. And this is your dead end because there's nothing on it, right? So when we're working with the bigger guys, we want to make sure that we're never saddling a dead horse. So now I put my cable in the saddle and I would fold it over and run it back through, okay? Now, for ease of use, you would don't normally take them all the way apart. Sometimes that becomes an issue. So, probably need to cut this one too. So you run it through, make sure these are pretty loose, but still on. And then you can fold it back on itself, right? Set up your desired lengths, drop a thimble into it, tighten it down, tighten these nuts up, and you're good to go. And you end up with a point that is a temporary version of the Nyko. okay? I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down, but you get the idea. Okay? And that works for you. Cool. So, why do we use that versus this? Well, once you do this one, it's stuck that way. That is how you use it. These allow you to adjust heights and levels to be able to mess through the process if you don't know exact lengths. It's always better to know exact lengths. Now, we have some other objects that can help us uh, do small trims, right? You hang a flat, it's square, it's pretty. All of a sudden we realize when we hang it, one side touching the floor and the other one's two inches off because either something in the floor is bad, somebody mismathed on the cable, something is wrong, right? We have some objects called turnbuckles, okay? And how these work is we would take some other various objects that we'll talk about in a second. We attach it to the bottom of the flat and to the top hanging point using an eye with a shackle, something like that. You can actually build one of those real quick just to show you how they go. Tiny shack. We're going to go bigger because it's more fun for me. All right. Build that through. Hook it. So this would be an example of how to use this turnbuckle. All right? It's a little big, big turnbuckle, but it'll work. So that hangs down. If the flat is here to adjust it, all we have to do is hold this and rotate these out. And this one will give you four inches or so of adjustment, which means you'd have to be really off if you're using this right for it not to work. And that's another way just to make sure that things are gonna hang pretty the entire time. These all come in different heights, sizes, weight ratios, everything else. And you need to make sure you're using the right stuff, but they're great tools. Now, when we're talking about turnbuckles, there's a few things we need to look at as far as just what we're using. This one is called an eye to eye. Why do you think it would be called that? Eye and eye, pretty simple. We also have eye and jaw, right? What these do is basically give you something similar to a shackle, it can be used the same way, built into the object, okay? It is another piece that can get lost. That's why a lot of people go eye, or go eye to eye because all of a sudden if I lose this pin, which, you know, you've lost a sock in the dryer, same thing. This is pretty much useless, right? Because you no longer have what the manufacturer specified. So that basically covers the it. Other lifting things that we can talk about. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Each of these turnbuckles is labeled with an R and an L, okay? If you're doing these and making sure that they work, when you're hanging them originally, just make sure that the R and the L are the same right? If this says L, make sure all of them have the L up top. If you don't, and you end up with this one going this way and this one going this way, what's going to end up happening is when you go to adjust these, you're going to have to think about which way to adjust each time, right? Because if you just sit here and spin it, it will, in this case, make it wider, right? We're adding length to that cable, and it's always going to be to the right. The second that you flip it over, now to do the same operation, you got to go to the left, 
Doesn't seem like a big thing, but it's really annoying. Just get them all straight and you're good to go, okay? A few other little things we want to talk about. On the bottom of flats, we were talking about what you'd connect them to, connect the turnbuckle to possibly, or the direct cable. This is a bottle, bottom hanging iron. They're normally a little more square than this, but this is a bottom hanging iron. You would end up going underneath it and using it as a lifting point, okay? And this is a standard one. We don't use it as much anymore because it's kind of hard to hide the fronts of them. We tend to go with these guys, right? Which then you can take a D ring, which is just a ring in the shape of a D, right? Slide it under and it's a lifting point. We normally use bolts to go through here, flush up against the bottom, and they lift it up really nicely, okay? Cool. Bottom irons, hanging plates. Last two things we need to talk about. One is an eye bolt, okay? The difference here is this is a forged eye bolt versus a cast eye bolt, right? The, ca the, the uh, cast ones are one piece. Wait, other way. This one's a forged. Anyway, um, the same concept goes, right? This would go into a piece of scenery, get bolted onto the back of it, and you could use it as a lifting iron. Cool? Things we don't want to see on scenery. S-hooks. These are great for hanging very, very, very lightweight curtains at your house. And sometimes very light fabric curtains. Problem with using these for any kind of actual weight is if I were to do something crazy like this, that weight will just straighten out that eye and it'll fall. Every time we rig something, we want to make sure that it's completely encased, right? That's why when we use the shackle, we have made a spot that's removable. And as we add this piece in, there's no way it can escape. Okay. Nowhere it can escape. The biggest thing about it is that's the safest way we can make it happen. Okay. Should talk about one other thing when it comes to shackling. Anytime you're doing any of this stuff and it ends up being wrong, meaning it's not plumb, all the things aren't perfect, you're not bell up or bell down, it's called fouling. How that normally happens is when you first lift something up, when this loses weight, it just just chilling in your hand or doing whatever. When you add weight to it, it can start trying to lift like that. So always make sure things are used as they should be. Okay. And I know these are small. We have another little thing I can show you to get a little more detail into them. But cool. The last thing we're going to talk about, and in the complete wrong order, is a pipe hanger. Okay. So every one of those battens that we looked at is held up by these. Or chain, one of the two. This can replace chain. Instead of wrapping your arm, this can go around it. You bolt, 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 put a shackle in the top, and now you can go straight up to the pipe, okay? Okay, doke, folks. In a nutshell, that was all the rigging hardware we normally use. There is a lot of specialty hardware, right? And a lot of stuff we need to look at for special instances. But for day-to-day -day uses, that about covers everything. We'll go into a little bit more detail in a PowerPoint here in a second, but, um, that's it in a nutshell. Thanks.